Good afternoon, guys. We've made our way down to uh, Everglades National Park. Uh, we're currently at the Royal Palms uh, area of the park. Uh, we've got a rather nice uh, lagoon right here. And we came across a gator right there. And then upon closer inspection, we saw some little babies right down over here. And I guess there's about 13 babies in total right here on this little river uh, uh, pond bank. But uh, we're gonna take a walk through here. I think we're not gonna go that way because I hear a bunch of little school kids. That's the only way the trail There's goes. another trail that goes that way. Oh. We might head down that way and see what's over there. So um, we're gonna kind of wander through the Everglades National Park here today. They're not quite ripe. Gotta wait a little bit longer before they'll be ripe. bedrock this is the bottom this is uh, this is bedrock this is underneath this is what everything of this earth is on is, is bedrock this is an area where it just happens to be exposed kind of neat and look another solution hole just a hole in the ground limestone as he wrote it away and because it's a low spot the water water gathers in there Quite often in the summertime, when there's more fresh water uh, recirculating through there, uh, animals will use it for a, a feeding source and a, a regular water source. Uh, this time of year, because it's so low in water level and there's so much other stuff growing in it, it's really not a good drinking source for animals. So they stay away from it this time of year. They're kind of smart about that. Everglades National Park is the largest tropical wilderness in the United States and the largest wilderness of any kind east of the Mississippi River. On average, one million people visit the park each year. Everglades National Park is the third largest national park in the contiguous lower 48 after Death Valley and Yellowstone. So from here, we're looking across what is the Everglades, I guess. It's a marshy area of grass, and then you see where all the trees are. That's an actual key. It's called Paradise Key. Uh, there's actual there, there's there's hardwood trees in there, as you can see, and, and palms and, and oaks bedrock. and stuff. And there's bedrock there. Yes, we walked through that just a bit ago. So that this is an actual key, not an island, uh, amongst all the uh, the grassy uh, Everglade area. So marshy lowlands. It's a river of grass. A river of grass. Yes, it's really kind of amazing. Battle scars too on the elbow. He's got some shiny skin. I think he's young. Yeah, I think so too. I'm standing behind this post just in case anything happens. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the post is going to save you? Oh, well, it'll help slow him down maybe. Checking me out. 
We have found ourselves at the Flamingo Visitor Center yes. and we got here just in time to take a boat tour. Right. So that's what we're going to do. It, it's a backcountry tour, so we're going to go into the mangroves and backcountry stuff, so it'll be kind of cool. Hopefully lots of alligators, crocodiles, birds, all that good stuff. Yeah. Maybe a manatee or two. Who knows? Everglades National Park is the most significant breeding ground for tropical wading birds in North America and contains the largest mangrove ecosystem in the Western Hemisphere. Thirty-six threatened or protected species inhabit the park, including the Florida panther, the American crocodile, and the West Indian manatee, along with 350 species of birds, 300 species of fresh and saltwater fish, 40 species of mammals, and 50 species of reptiles. The ecosystems in Everglades National Park have suffered significantly from human activity and restoration of the Everglades is a politically charged issue in South Florida. Prior to our life on the road in the disco, Gary and I were both boaters. We both grew up boating on the Puget Sound and beyond with our grandparents as kids. And when we first married, we had a 30-foot cabin cruiser that we spent our summers on in the Pacific Northwest. We've always had the plan to return to boating by age 50, and well, that time is nearing. So while in the Miami area, we contacted a yacht broker to take a look at a couple of boats. But don't worry, we're not going to go all gone with the winds on you. We're just window shopping for now. High on our list is a vessel that we can take up to Alaska through the Inside Passage, following the wake of my grandparents' adventures when I was in high school. Due to this type of cruising, our number one choice we are looking at is a trawler and this particular boat has been on our radar for well over a year now. This is a Beneteau Swift Trawler 52, a perfect coastal cruiser with a pilot house, three staterooms that can sleep six, and living space large enough to be a liveaboard for months at a time. Perfect for an adventure to Alaska. Mom, Dad, can you sleep in here for a little while? I don't know. Would that work out for you? It's better than the engine room. Yeah. In my teenage years, my grandparents would fly me up as soon as school let out to help them with their boat while they cruised the southeastern waters of Alaska during the summer. And it's always been my wish to return to Alaska by boat as an adult. And I hope one day Gary and I can fulfill that dream. We want to thank Blake Nickel with Denison Yacht Sales out of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida for taking the time to show us a couple of boats. If you are in the Miami area and looking for a boat too, Blake is your guy. So, are you comfortable driving a motorhome by yourself? 
I may have to get a couple of crew members to go with me. We got to take this home. That's not happening. <laughs> no, but it sure is a nice boat. Yeah. Um, it, it, you know, we did a lot of YouTube, this and that, but getting in the boat and actually feeling it and being in it um, felt really nice. Um, a couple of things were didn't realize, you know, steep steps and some narrow places here and there, but for the most part, it's a very nice boat, and I think it really, really could satisfy our needs. Um, but we're gonna keep shopping. But we gotta keep shopping. We, you know, I'm not gonna. It's the first one we had our feet on. It's the first one we stepped into. So you, you know, if if it's if it's available when we're ready to purchase, great. But right now, it was a great first step. Next time on Powhana Travels, we give a real-time update on what we've been up to since our last video from Florida and recap our journey back west to our home base in Washington State. Be sure to hit the red subscribe button below so you don't miss our next Powhana adventures. As always, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up down below, leave us a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We thank you for watching. Until next time, Pow Hana. Hana.